What's going on, people? Just a quick discussion I wanted to have with y'all. I know we talked about all these gangsters, and we all cover how to get started in the game, as well as how it ends. Now, during my year and a half covering content, I've learned the difference between a gangster, a businessman, and a psychopath. Now, a gangster, he busts his gun for what he believes in, a color, a block, a neighborhood. He might sell drugs here and there, but when it comes to the set, he'll put in work for free. It was a dark period for Output when he got with Wayne Perry, but that was the business side of him. He did what he had to do to get to the next level. He heard about Wayne Perry's reputation, but he didn't know he was a sick and twisted man until it was too late. These two got together, and it was basically over for DC. The two moved like they were going to the mattresses, and if you don't know what that means, that's a term used by the Mafia when they went to war. You know, they couldn't go home, so they would be deep in an apartment or a hideout with mattresses all on the floor, with guns everywhere you eat and sleep together. Alpon and Wayne Perry went from apartment to apartment, moving like vampires all through the night, switching cars, sleeping in cars if they had to, sleeping in cheap apartments and motels together. They even shared the same women for the convenience. Sitting outside of night spots and nightclubs to stalk potential enemies. Now, with Rafe and Frey out the picture, I personally believe Alpo and Wing Perry would have took over DC. The strategic chess moves they made, they were eliminating enemies in competition, picking them off one by one. The two couldn't do it without each other. Alpo had the money and the product. Wayne had the muscle and knew the streets of DC like the back of his hand. Not MJ and Pimpin, more like MJ and Rodman. Post sold the bricks and made all the money. All Wayne had to do was do what he knew best play defense, and dominate the boards, creating a duo that was unstoppable, unmatched. Now, they had others a part of the crew also. But we'll talk about that later. Now, most people will look at Wayne Perry as a hitman. A hitman takes on contracts to get rid of people for a price, and it's not cheap. A smart hitman will find the easiest way to get rid of his victims. For example, one clean headshot with a silencer and get right out of there as quick as possible. Leaving no trace would be the smart route to take. Now, Wayne once spotted a witness that was going to testify against him. Instead of using a gun and leaving her there on the street, he used a knife and stabbed her in the face repeatedly. Not only was it very personal, but it left him with a mess to clean up. That action itself separates psychopath from gangster. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but the average African-American gangster doesn't like blood and gore. Shit, most can't even eat a medium rare steak. <laughs> now, I know we have some like Preacher and, you know, all those guys, the janitors that was cleaning up all the blood and stuff like that. But the average African-American would rather just use the gun and leave you where you are. Now, we have the Italians that, you know, chop bodies up and get rid of them. And then you got the cartel members that are chop your head off. You know, blacks ain't really into that. I mean, you might get a buck fifty to the face or, you know, some chest work, but, you know, that's about it. But anyway, DC has some hitters like Shorty Pop being as young, 15 to 16 years old, putting in work. You had the guy Michael Jackson. He actually did two hits for Alpo. You know, Wayne Perry himself. Yeah, and you have Roy and Cliff Cobb, and you have some more people. I'm not going to name them all. But when you see pictures of these guys, there's no tattoos on their faces, no ski masks, and, you know, face covers, you know. You know, that stuff that they're wearing nowadays are just costumes of what they think a gangster should look like. Back then, you might have looked at Wayne Perry like, who's this tall, goofy dude, not knowing he's the Grim Reaper, and he'll beat you up. <laughs> but, you know, Alpo and Wayne Perry, a dominant team that wasn't based on loyalty at all. They didn't play by any rules. And, you know, two guys that didn't even trust each other but still managed to potentially take over in a short amount of time. You know, they wasn't even together for a long time. Just like I said, the strategic moves put them in a winning position. Another personal target was Demencio Benson. Very, very personal. They had to finish him in public. There's even a time where they saw Mike Tyson with a person that looked like Demencio that they thought was Demencio. And Alpo even said it out of his own mouth. If that was the Mencio, they would have killed them both. Now that tells you how dangerous both these men were at the time. They were willing to take out a public figure just to eliminate their target. Now, Alpo had to confess to 14 murders, but that doesn't mean he pulled the trigger on all of them. If he ordered the hit or participated in any way, that murder is his. 
I wouldn't consider Alpo a serial killer. He's more of a businessman. He crossed almost everyone he came across. He did what's best for him. Wayne Perry, on the other hand, killed for fun. He killed to set examples. He gets that serial killer and psychopath stamp, according to his actions. We don't know what in the world happened in his childhood, but, you know, it must have been something crazy. Now, if you don't agree with me about the two taking over D.C., who would have stopped them? Yeah, everybody was busting their gun on the streets, but it's all about the drop. It's all about the chess moves in the game. Chess moves like using someone from the other side to get close to your enemy. That's exactly what Alpo did. No one else proved to be more strategic. So until I hear otherwise, I think I'm comfortable with my pick. The only thing that stopped the duo would be law enforcement, of course. So you know the typical Alpo business move and then he moves on. With Alpo not playing the street rules, he almost outlasts everyone. And of course, we all know he went back to the streets after he got out, which was a big mistake. He could have just took advantage of this media money. He could have been a millionaire off his own story. So, you know. But let me know in the comments. Get involved, people. Was Alpo and Wayne Perry on the verge of taking over the streets of D.C.? And if not, tell me who. And who was in their way that they didn't already eliminate? I appreciate everyone that's involved. Shout out to everyone that likes comments you know subscribe shout out to my day ones shout out to all my new hustlers you know enjoy i'm out